Summary of a Mercy by Toni Morrison The novel is told from many different points of view and doesn't follow a straight line through time. Therefore, it is not easy to determine where a mercy actually starts. One possible start is the day that Jacob Vark, a farmer and trader from New England, goes to Maryland to settle a debt with Dortega, a plantation owner and slave dealer. As payment for Jacob's debt, Dortega offers him any slave he wants. Even though Jacob doesn't like slavery, he suggests taking Florence's mother as a slave. Florence's mother asks Jacob to take her daughter Florence instead, because she has been sexually abused and raped by Dortega all her life and doesn't want the same thing to happen to Florence. Jacob says yes, so Dortega makes plans to send Florence to New England. Florence feels abandoned because she doesn't know why her mother gave her up. Jacob looks at Dortega's beautiful house as he leaves the farm. On his way home, Jacob chooses to put more money into the sugarcane business so he can make enough money to build a house like the one he already has. Florence meets Jacob's wife, Rebecca, and their slaves, Lena and Sorrow, at the Vark farm. After Jacob put up an ad in England saying he was looking for a wife, Rebecca came from Europe to marry him. Patrician, Rebecca's daughter, died in an accident with a horse not long ago. Before Patrician died, all of Rebecca's baby boys died when they were young. Florence quickly learns that Sorrow, who was found half-drowned as a teenager and then given to Jacob, is mentally unstable. Before Florence came, Sorrow had a baby that Lena told her was stillborn, which made her even more unstable mentally. Lena, a native woman whose whole town burned down, takes Florence under her wing and raises her as her own child. Jacob's investments start to make him rich, so he chooses to build a house like Dortega's. People from all over come to work on it. Willard and Scully, bonded slaves from the farm next door, are among them. Willard and Scully know the Vark family well because they spent a lot of time at the farm. Jacob also wants a fence made of iron, so he hires a blacksmith to make it for him. When Florence meets the blacksmith, a free African man, she falls in love with him. The two fall in love with each other. Lena tells Florence to be careful because she herself has been hurt by a bad relationship in the past. Sorrow gets sick with smallpox while the blacksmith is living on the farm, but he heals her in a way that seems impossible. When the blacksmith is done with his work, he leaves the farm without saying goodbye to Florence. This makes her very sad. When Jacob gets smallpox, Sorrow is already pregnant and his house is almost done. All the workers leave because they are afraid of spreading the disease, and not even Willie and Scully are allowed close. Jacob's last wish is to be carried into his new house to die there, so Rebecca, Lena, Florence, and Sorrow all bring him inside, where he dies. At Jacob's wake, Rebecca sees that her mouth is full of bumps. The next day, she is sick enough to stay in bed. Rebecca sends Florence to find the blacksmith and bring him back with her because she remembers how he helped Sorrow when she was sick. Florence goes on her trip, but Lena stays behind to take care of Rebecca. After a scary night in the woods and a ride in a wagon, Florence comes to a town and asks Widow Ealing and her daughter Jane to take him in. The other people in the town have said that Jane is a demon. They come to the house to check on Florence while she is there. When the locals see Florence there, they call her a devil because her skin is dark. Florence runs away with the help of Jane before they can hurt her. Florence finally gets to the house of the blacksmith. She tells him about Rebecca, and the blacksmith makes the decision to leave right away. He tells Florence that she needs to stay at his house so she can care for Malik, a boy he has taken in. Florence is jealous and scared of the boy because he wants the blacksmith's full love and attention. The blacksmith rides away to help Rebecca get better. While the blacksmith is gone for a few days, Florence worries about the boy more and more. She remembers how she thinks her mother chose her baby brother over her, and she worries that the same thing will happen with Malik. Malik won't stop crying, so Florence grabs him hard by the arm and breaks it by accident. The blacksmith comes back just then and sees that Florence hurt the child. He hits Florence and kicks her out because he is so angry. 
Florence uses a pair of tongs to hit the blacksmith in the face, cutting him, and then runs away. She walks barefoot through the woods to get back to the Vark farm. When Florence comes back, he sees that Rebecca is better. Still, a lot has changed. The farm got out of hand while Rebecca was away, so she hired Will and Scully to help. Sorrow had her baby while Florence was away, and being a mother has helped her mental health a lot. After her close call with death, Rebecca becomes very holy and also very mean. She treats Lena badly, hits Sorrow, and wants to sell Florence. The same is true for Florence. Since the blacksmith left her, she is much more moody and often thinks about how, as far as she knows, her mother also left her. Every night, she sneaks into the house and carves her story into the wood of one room, hoping that the blacksmith will read it one day. Florence never finds out that her mother loves her without thinking of herself. About the author Toni Morrison was born Chloe Ardelia Wofford in Lorraine, Ohio, to Rama and George Wofford, who were both working-class people. Morrison's parents left the South and moved to Ohio to get away from the deadly racism that was getting worse in the South in the early 1900s. Morrison got his Bachelor of Arts in English from Howard University in 1953. He then went to Cornell University to get his Master of Arts in English. Morrison then taught English at a number of universities, including her former school, Howard University. The Bluest Eye, her first book, came out in 1970. Since her first book, Morrison has written 11 novels, including Beloved, which won the Pulitzer Prize. She has also written plays, books for kids, and nonfiction books. Morrison was given the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1993. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.